My great granddad had 11 children and he brought two of the boys and dropped them off on a section out here and they broke it out of grass so. with mules. That That's was in the teens, 1914, something like that, I think. So we've been here 100 years. Steve Norman is a cotton farmer in Garza County, Texas. He irrigates 2,500 acres in the Texas South Plains. We're in the southern end of the Ogallala Aquifer. Our water depth is anywhere from 75 to 150 feet, typically. The Ogallala Aquifer is the largest aquifer in the United States and one of the largest in the world, covering parts of eight states along the Great Plains. We're in the largest cotton patch on Earth here in West Texas. Most farmers in the region drill wells to access the water for irrigation. So it's a semi-arid environment, so we have to be really careful with how much we cultivate and how long our cover crops grow, how much water is taken away from the soil from evaporation and transpiration. The aquifer faces a lot of pressures on its water supply. The Ogallala region heavily relies on the aquifer for crop irrigation. The Texas Water Development Board says 95% of water pumped from the aquifer is used for agriculture. The aquifer refills when it rains and the water filters through the ground. But water is being pulled out faster than it can be replaced. If that aquifer doesn't recharge, what are we going to have to work with? And are we going to have to compete with urban areas that are going to demand water? Norman says one of the solutions to help with limited water is for him and other farmers to be as efficient as possible. We've had inefficient watering systems like center pivot sprinklers. There's a lot of evaporation loss with that. Even though it'll cover a lot of acres, it does, it's not as efficient water usage as subsurface irrigation. So we've taken some of those center pivot irrigated acres and converted them to what we call drip. This is our drip tape. It's got emitters spaced evenly on it, so it's given a consistent amount of water directly to the cotton plant. So it's a precision delivery of water. You can look at drip acres and next to dry land, and you can't really tell where one ends and where one begins in the off season. During the year, you can see cotton that's that big or this big and just a completely different plant. Norman's family has been farming this land for more than a century, but he hopes new technology like drip irrigation can help future generations continue to grow cotton here into the future.